All right, let's just get right into it today. I'm not going to bother to throw on the Intel shirt or change the coloring right now because, well, I've been really struggling with what to do with my video for today. A video that, as you might guess or obviously know from clicking on the title or thumbnail, involves Alder Lake. You see, I had an Intel Alder Lake pricing breakdown that I was hoping to get out Monday, but due to family reasons and... Honestly, just me trying to make sure I had all of my ducks in a row, it wasn't done quite until late last night, and I was too tired to do the final check to make sure there weren't, well, wild problems in the video. Now, obviously, though, I realized before I went to bed, oh yeah, isn't there an Intel Innovation event going on tomorrow? Well then there's no point in me even worrying about it anyways. If I release some Intel Alder Lake pricing information, which the video you're now seeing playing next to me is the video I put together, people are going to know in a few days anyways. There's really no reason to show this if you are worried that you could get it wrong at all, which, well, fortunately or unfortunately, it looks like my information was dead on. Depending on the region, Alder Lake is right around the minimum pricing I said, depending on the SKU. And, well, on Newegg, it was towards the upper estimates, at least for the i9, because they can get away with it. That thing sold out immediately, even with a marked up price you know so yeah that video was really taking a look at when it's necessary to do a leak because i feel like i've been dancing around the fact that intel really isn't going to increase pricing for most of the alder lake skus over the rocket lake skus they're replacing besides the i9 because that's a flagship product so it'll be a little more expensive but so much cheaper than zen 3 um well now we know that that all turned out to be true there's no reason in me leaking something that intel officially confirmed but I suppose what I can do is give you my thoughts, which was a part of that video as well, on what I believe people should be thinking about when they consider buying Alder Lake or when they consider buying Alder Lake when it's back in stock because, of course, it's already sold out. And what a lot of – well, really some caution that I think should be advised for about half of the people that are considering getting Alder Lake because I am – as I said on Twitter today, very excited about Alder Lake challenging AMD. But at the same time, I don't think it's as for as many people as you might think. Or should I say, I don't think, even though this is probably the most exciting CPU launch in a while, I don't think most people should jump on it unless it's an overdue upgrade. And then I, that a lot of that has to do with what I know now about what's coming with Zen 4, Zen 5, Raptor Lake and DDR5 pricing. So stay tuned for that, but first an ad from a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Reese, it's gonna be okay. I think maybe you need to download an app to work on your stress levels. We can all use a little self-improvement, can't we? That's why the fabulous app was created, to build better habits tailored to what you wish to improve. Fabulous makes it easy for anyone to develop and stick to healthy habits thanks to science-backed daily routines. It breaks down scientifically proven healthy habits into very small tasks that you can achieve every single day, whether that's more healthy sleeping and wake-up routines, more exercise, more moderate drinking habits, anything Fabulous is 100% personalized. And if you're someone that knows what you want to improve, you can pick among 100 plus recommended habits or create your own. Or Fabulous has guided paths for multiple journeys to achieve specific goals. Fabulous basically serves as a dedicated coach in your pocket to help you find a more ideal and healthy daily routine and one that you can actually stick to. Support Moore's Law is Dead and support a healthier life for yourself by clicking the link in the description. The first 100 people who click the link will get 25% off their yearly premium subscription to Fabulous. Improve yourself by downloading the Fabulous app today. So first things first, let me very quickly give my thoughts on the Intel Innovation event today and also just on anything new that came out about Alder Lake, which really, from my perspective, there wasn't anything that new or interesting. Uh, honestly, one of the things that stood out to me the most about the Innovation event was that Intel's finally kind of not lying about TDP. They're just like, yeah, look, this is going to boost to high power levels if you have the extra cooling, but we're, we're not going to lie about what those power levels are. But if you don't cool it well enough, it will be the advertised TDP. So I'm excited to see them, you know, stop lying about power usage. That's good. Um, but besides that, 
outside of a few hilarious flubs during the event, like for some reason thinking it's a good idea to do overclocking live, I don't know who approved that idea, and the weird stumbles here and there, I think it was about what you would expect from an Intel event. Pat Gelsinger has this sort of, I don't know how to put it, it's almost like a dorky big dick energy that is almost a little nervous, but in an excited way. Intel still seems like their marketing levels really aren't even at to what AMD's slick presentations are like today, or even close to NVIDIA marketing, but there's this there's this confident giddiness I'm seeing in them from this event that makes me excited because this tells you they are confident in Alder Lake, they are confident in Arc, and they are confident in what they have coming after that, Raptor Lake. So that's really all I have to say about that event except that I'm actually not going to dissect any of the performance claims. I have communicated consistently what I believe Alder Lake will be, which is a big deal. I've said since that February leak that based on the information I had all the way back then double confirmed, you know, it's going to be the best gaming CPU and it's going to beat the 5900X at least in multi-threading. Outside of that, I would stay away from really taking Intel's claims at face value and therefore though, I just wouldn't even bother worrying about it until the full benchmarks come out. I'm sure there's some bullshittery going on. It is Intel after all, but... You know, if you think there's some bullshitting going on, that also means you shouldn't be sure how much or how little there is. Alder Lake will be the best gaming CPU. Alder Lake will have multi-threading that's competitive with AMD for most of the lineup, if not the entire lineup. It's really all you need to know. Per SKU, so i9 versus R9, i7 versus AMD R7, a uh, Intel's SKU to SKU pricing is going to be aggressive to AMD. But at the same time, Alder Lake's not going to be cheap. It's because if you want the peak performance, you do need to buy your own cooling. And that cooling is going to probably be more expensive than what you need to buy for AMD. That still just holds the crown, at least in top-end performance efficiency. Maybe not, though, in the low end. We'll have to see. And in addition to that, well, there's Z690, which has PCIe 5.0. That's not cheap. And if you want a high-end motherboard to not hold back the i9, maybe you don't need it for the i5. But for the i9, at least you need to get DDR5. And so, yeah, there's a reason Intel did the SKU pricing the way they needed to do it, right? Basically, to be, well, to be entirely honest, when I look on Newegg, Z690 isn't that bad compared to what I would think. It's basically priced like really high-end X570 motherboards, which it should be. It has cutting-edge features. But the DDR5 price is a price that's unavoidable. You know, Intel needs the i7 I mean, the i9 to basically be somewhere around $200 less than the 5950X because, well, you, you kind of need to throw $200 on top of that for the cooling motherboard and DDR5 costs, with the emphasis being that the DDR5 is the biggest problem. As so you go down the product stack, though, the i5 is more aggressively priced against the 5800X. But again, that's because... The DDR5 issue is an even bigger one in the low end. Heck, if you think about it, low-end Alder Lake CPUs may cost less than the RAM used to support them, depending on what type of gamer or content creator you are. But here's the thing. According to my best sources, this may not be the case for that long, and it might mean you should just wait for Raptor Lake or Zen 4 anyways. And that's the DDR5 pricing. Let me go through some quotes I have here from my contacts. Yep, don't need to talk about this, do we? It's all public information now. But what we do need to talk about is what's going on with DDR5 pricing. Now, it's not new that the newest DDR is more expensive than the previous one. We saw this with Haswell E. But I did get a whisper from one of my best sources a couple of weeks ago that surprised me in a way that the Alder Lake pricing I can, was about to confirm did not. And this is from a major OEM. This is someone who makes direct decisions on sourcing and sees a lot of pricing information in high volume. This is someone that knows what this person's talking about. Now, this person said that they are getting DDR5 this year for about 14% more per gigabyte than DDR4. And that even so, they're still going to put DDR4 in some low-end Alder Lake pre-built systems, but that's because it really doesn't affect the performance of those lower-end systems. And frankly, if you're just putting a non-KI5 or lower into something, they might as well make the extra profit because, you know, a entry-level PC with an i3, those 
people buying that aren't going to know the difference between DDR4 and DDR5 anyway. So they'll just see the latest Intel. He's just being honest, and they will see the amount of RAM. They'll think that's good. And also from what I hear, for the models that don't have little cores, which on desktop right now is as I've confirmed in a previous leak, non-KI5 and lower, I don't think they really get almost anything out of DDR5. But again, we'll have to wait for benchmarks to confirm that. So this is one source who was surprised at what they saw on Newegg pricing. And there's another source here, again, memory manufacturer, this person knows what they're talking about, that said it's the latest DDR, so of course it costs more now, but long term, they don't expect their customers to pay more than an extra 10% per gigabyte over DDR5 relative to DDR4. And in fact, that even to smaller system sellers, you know, just like those smaller boutique PC builders, as long as they're selling thousands a month or something, maybe even hundreds a month, that the bulk system memory they're selling are maybe 20% or a little more than that per gigabyte for DDR5 versus DDR4. And this is now two people. One person saying in super high volume, it's maybe around 14% more per gigabyte. And then someone saying even the mid-sized and smaller sellers, it's maybe 20% or so more per gigabyte. This is big information. This is not what we are seeing on Newegg right now. And to be fair, I did reach out to another one of my longest term sources here who's really come to bat for me on so many things. He said, what I can confirm is that some of these memory makers are being charged to the nose for the DDR5 modules, being surprised at what I said about, you know, the high volume and even mid volume per gigabyte pricing. In other words, it's not like all of the DDR5 pricing on Newegg is just complete milking from the person packaging it, selling it, and giving you a warranty. But at the very least, even if someone like, I don't, you know, I don't know, someone like Corsair is paying through the nose for the memory, and so they're charging you a lot more because they are themselves paying more for the modules, that's definitely not true for most of the DDR5 volume. It's just most of the volume is going to people, you know, like HP, Lenovo, Dell, and then other boutique system sellers that sell hundreds or thousands of PCs a month in pre-builds. Look, the do-it-yourself market is a shit show right now. I don't want to double down on when uh, any products will crash to any price exactly. I'm not going to give you a month because it's just so erratic right now. But what I can say is that DDR5 does not need to cost twice as much as DDR4, and, and it doesn't even need to cost 50% more, and that a lot of people I asked really do expect DDR5 pricing at the very least to crash next year. Alder Lake is basically buying into the next gen early right? It, it It's for those people who have a good reason to do that now, that are being held back now, that need to build a new system now. But it isn't as good as the next gens. That's the thing. And when those next gens come out, Raptor Lake and Zen 4, I expect DDR5 to be significantly cheaper. So if you don't need to build now, which if you do, good for you, especially if it's for work in some fashion, Never be afraid to upgrade to the best if you can utilize the best right now. But if you're uh, someone like me, maybe, you know, who's on a 3950X, I, I, I'm much more tempted to just wait and see what Zen 4 ends up entirely being, or even Zen 5, uh, or, or upgrading to Zen 3D so I don't need to go through the process of an entirely new platform. You know, that's what I'm looking to do. If you have, like, Zen 2, Comet Lake, or I guess Rocket Lake, if someone has that, there's... No need unless you're being held back in your applications, which I doubt you are in gaming or content creation, to upgrade right now and make do with all of the current crap going on with shortages, milking, and that DDR5 tax. I don't think you need to. Do not underestimate how good Raptor Lake and especially Zen 4 are. With regards to Raptor Lake, it's going to be about 10% higher single core performance, and it's going to double little core count. If you're a gamer, 10% better gaming, and you waited for when RAM was cheaper. And if you're not a gamer, they doubled the little cores. Way better multi-threading performance. This will blow away Zen 3, Zen 3D, Alder Lake, everything. And by then, I'm guessing the platform cost will have gone down as well. So there's no reason not to wait. But... I also think that Raptor Lake will be priced just as aggressively as Alder Lake because, well, I guess I just can't help myself. I got to change the color here. I, I am starting to get more whispers about what's going on with Zen 4 and even Zen 5, and I am getting very excited. In a lot of my recent videos, people will have noticed that I 
have never said AMD isn't sitting still. It's just that I ha, Intel. I have a lot of great Intel sources, and I know what Intel's got coming is really impressive over the next few years. And well, I'm sure Zen Four will bring at least a 25% IPC increase, DDR5. You know, at least be competitive with Raptor Lake. I was going, yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe Raptor Lake could even win. It might be able to, but what I've just heard about Zen 4 and architectures connected to it suggests to me that AMD has some tricks up their sleeve that people may not see coming or they haven't seen coming yet. And that AMD's solution to taking on what Intel is doing with Big Little may be every bit as innovative except smarter and more cost effective. That's going to come in an upcoming video. But it's not going to be this one. I want to make sure I get the information, the presentation of that right. What's important to know now, I think, is that what Intel's launching with Alder Lake is a return to form, challenging AMD. But an AMD that's current flagship architecture is a year old. It's great. It's kind of a next-gen platform. But a next-gen platform that uses more energy and is going to cost more right now. If you don't need it right now, Zen 5 and Raptor Lake are going to be better and be in a market with probably more favorable RAM pricing. You should probably wait for that if you can. As for Zen 4 and Zen 5, and well, I won't even say the other ones, you're going to have to wait for those videos. Remember to subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss those upcoming links. I've got that and also some very exciting stuff about Intel Arc very soon. So don't miss that. And then, of course, you know, subscribe to Broken Silicon on your preferred podcast app. Give us a review that really helps us get in viewers from the non-YouTube markets. And if you, above all else, have any extra money a month every month, consider supporting Moore's Law is Dead on Patreon. It pays me. It pays Dan. It pays Gerard. We're trying to hire on more people. You know, we're trying to expand the team. We really can't do this without our patrons and they get early ad free access to content the ability to ask us questions content no one else gets besides the patrons you know that's all there for you if you have the extra money but if you don't and you watch this video doesn't matter thank you for watching <laughs>